Hello everyone, I am Tim Fleming. I'm CEO and co-founder of Future Visual. Um, uh, and delighted to be here today talking to Silicon Brighton on the invitation of Steve Rackley and the team. Uh, Future Visual are based here in Brighton. We have a speciality in bringing people together in immersive spaces, whatever device they're on. So they can use VR, AR, desktop and mobile using our platform, whoop, Vision XR, the future of collaboration and training at work. So what am I here to talk to you about today? I am going to chat about what is an emerging metaverse and how might it impact you? Has COVID-19 accelerated the adoption of immersive technology spaces? And how can we at Future Visual help you with what are becoming these new normals. Anyway, I hope you have all been keeping safe and been keeping well. So to tackle the first of those topics, um, what is the metaverse? Um, in fact, maybe to go back uh, a little bit earlier than that, um, I'm sure you know many of you are familiar with uh, immersive spaces, with immersive technology, uh, immersive technology such as this. This is an HTC Vive and um, that's the headset and the controllers look a little bit like this. So this is a head mounted display, Ooh, head mounted display that you wear and then you hold controllers as well. And um, obviously by putting on a headset you believe or your body kind of very quickly goes, oh, I'm in another world, I'm in another space and you have the sort of biochemical response that makes you believe that you're in another space. That's your kind of 101 for anyone who is not familiar with VR. What we do at Future Visual is we enable people using VR uh, or mobile uh, or desktop to all come together into the same immersive space. And it is this being together in one immersive space where we're starting to see the emerging metaverse. Now, pre-COVID metaverse certainly was in the realm of science fiction. I mean, the metaverse, that's where it came from. It was originally talked about in cyberpunk novels in the 90s, which seems strangely uh, prophetic. Um, uh, a book called Snow Crash um, by Neil Stevenson and other books by William Gibson, Neuromancer. I mean, pretty standard kind of science fiction fare. And, you know, it was quite a bold statement to say, oh, the metaverse is coming, even though we're on a great wave of VR discovery and impl implementation, particularly in the enterprise space currently. What COVID has done is it has kind of accelerated this need for people to be together somehow. And VR and immersive technology has been here, you know, just kind of at the right time. Um, for people to experiment with and go, oh, actually, uh, this kind of works. I do feel like I'm in the same space. So it's this ability to be and feel that you're interacting in the same space, even though you're in other locations. So an emerging metaverse, what does it really mean beyond that kind of basic description I've, I've given? Well, obviously it comes from the word universe uh, and I was looking these details up and what's the origin of you know the word universe 
So the definition of, well, universe to begin with is taken from the word verse, which actually bizarrely means uh, the turning of the plow or creating of a furrow. So verse, V-R-S, means this creating of a single furrow and obviously uni means one. And meta means beyond or means the most effective tactics available. So meta means after, along or beyond. So the metaverse means obviously beyond what we can do in the universe. Um, so, you know, to say that we were seeing the emergence of the metaverse pre-COVID was a bit of a grand statement. Um, but really, you know, the metaverse is uh, beyond nature. So it is us using electronic digital devices to kind of enhance our ability. So actually me using my phone is a version of me engaging in the metaverse. The phone allows me to have uh, kind of superior abilities that I wouldn't have if I was just reliant on nature. So this emerging metaverse we're sort of seeing all around us, obviously most clearly defined by the emergence of the internet and the you know massive growth that that is experiencing year on year. Again, COVID has pushed us all to rely on the internet. So normally we'll be having these talks in person, uh, obviously remote shopping both for food and just for general goods via Amazon has all rocketed up. Um, the ability to buy goods and services in a kind of digital realm is the emerging metaverse. And we're seeing that more and more. And I think other areas that reflect the emerging metaverse is uh, non-ownership of goods. So non-ownership of music, Spotify, you know, you're streaming music, Uber, you're, you know, essentially hiring the car for, and the driver uh, for time. These are all reflections of the emerging metaverse. And what's particularly happened in the last couple of months where people haven't been able to go to concerts or they haven't been able to go to cultural events is you've started to see those music events taking place in digital properties. So recently in the game Fortnite, there was a big concert by a guy called Travis Scott in the States. Now he had a big tour planned at the time, but he was unable to um, make the tour. The tour was, was not able to happen. So they just did it in Fortnite and you know, huge numbers of people um, turned up. And that has kind of kick-started the doors opening to the emerging metaverse. And, you know, we're seeing it really in online training. We're seeing it in remote collaboration. We're seeing it in cultural events. And if it's happening at the kind of forefront of consumer and customer experience, then it will also be happening for your employee experience. So this emerging metaverse, while it seemed like the kind of uh, whim of science fiction or something that was gonna happen in the future, it's most definitely happening now and it will infect your customer and employee experience. So you wanna get versed with what does the emerging metaverse mean and how can it benefit your company? How can it benefit your employees? Because whilst we all love a good face-to-face -face interaction, as time becomes a stronger commodity that we have uh, less uh, available, whilst the barrier of distance um, can prohibit for us from having experiences, the sort of the metaverse can help us solve some of those problems. Um, we don't need to travel to physical locations to undertake training or to have a kind of um, high level showroom or dealership experience. Obviously a lot of that has been having it have happening online, but very much we're still on the big purchases, we're still programmed or our conditioning is 
do some research online and then go and look at a physical object. Um, whereas I think all of that is up for grabs. In terms of your employee experience, the way that's shaking up is previously you might have had a bit of blended learning or classroom learning and then gone to a training hub um, to learn on the job. And um, the most effective training can now happen in immersive spaces um, where, you know, how we described at Future Visual is the um, ability to have access to situations and scenarios that are either physically impossible or prohibitively expensive. And we've done that in training for IATA, the International Air Transport Association, where we've delivered four products uh, around ground crew training. And they have enabled uh, trainees to have a wide range of aircraft, a wide range of errors, different languages, different atmospheric conditions. They've had daytime, nighttime, high visibility, low visibility, um, group work, and, and, and all these kind of errors like dented fuselages, flat tires, oil spills, etc. All this stuff that you would be very difficult, very expensive to simulate in real life. So COVID-19 has certainly accelerated uh, all these phenomena. And it's having quite unintended consequences when you see organization like Barclays saying that actually they're gonna rethink their entire staffing operation. And do they really need to have offices that can take 9,000 staff? We're hearing from people who are who have been doing the remote working and actually have found that it kind of quite works for their lifestyle. Now I think over a long duration for those of us who have been sort of adhering to quite a strict lockdown, you definitely get an element of cabin fever. We're definitely missing out on having a complete team by not being able to meet up physically. But actually being able to work remotely has been a lot less problematic than I think a lot of us would have imagined um, pre-lockdown. I know certainly speaking from our position at Future Visual, you know, we always had a very strong preference for wanting to have on-site devs. But as soon as we found we were working remotely, we could widen the talent pool to look for devs on the same time zone. And it's meant we found some really great staff. So there are many upsides to remote working that I don't think people were counting on um, prior to COVID having the impact that it has. And let's face it, you know, we're not out of the woods with COVID yet. Um, it could be a heavy second spike. Who knows what the rest of the year holds. So there's the practicalities that we've had to look at on the one hand, and then there's the benefits of this new way of working that have emerged on the other hand. And it's like, how do we put them together to really work for everyone so that our employees and our customers can have the best possible experience, but also ensuring that um, our kind of pastoral and just psychological needs are, are met through meeting up. In the context of your staff, you know, we're looking at using the office in a very different way, in a much more creative way. And in terms of your brands, that's wanting to actually meet up with the retailer and have you know, some kind of feel good experience, but perhaps not have to be greeted by racks and racks of low cost clothing uh, in the way that you perhaps previously were. So there's been this big shift. I think in terms of the technology we deliver, which enables collaboration on all devices, COVID has provided a tailwind of three to five years of bringing it up the agenda. Uh, and I think now as companies stabilize and look at um, ways in which they can react to the new environment, looking at collaborative immersive training is, is certainly something that they want to, you should consider. Um, not only does it allow your teams to come together from remote locations, um, but by training and learning uh, in immersive spaces using VR, there's, uh, you have a much higher retention, uh, you have a much faster um, speed to competency. Very interesting data coming out of PwC this month, just sort of reiterating. Obviously, you know, being a VR company, we're quite heavy cheerleaders for like, oh look, positive data. Um, but there are you know more and more 
quite in-depth research pieces coming out to show that there is a strong uh, validity in using immersive tech for some of your more difficult training needs. And that's before you get into the, the other um, upside or benefit, which is it can bring, bring your remote team together. So I talked about how uh, collaborative tech is being used to supplement um, museum and gallery experiences, lots of kind of theatrical type releases, not cinema um, theatrical, but uh, cultural based experiences are looking at immersive tech. And obviously, you know, stadium, sporting events, football, etc., have all, be, all been closed down, uh, including esports. Um, esports, obviously, massive growing phenomena, which typically culminates in a large stadium experience where tens of thousands of people um, meet up to watch their their favourite game. Um, so you know, this summer, the uh, Dota Two. Um, finals in Birmingham have been cancelled but fortunately Vision XR Future Visual have been welcomed onto a consortium put together by Audience of the Future industrial strategy by UK government to build an immersive viewing structure for system for esports now obviously when you're dealing with esports you're getting a lot of digital data from the game you've got a map of the game You've got all the data feeds on uh, player performance. Um, in the consortium, we have University of York who are specialists at uh, trend analysis, uh, player performance analysis. And what we're doing is um, we are enabling everyone to come together on any device, VR, AR, desktop or mobile. mobile. We're then getting data in on past player performance um, from University of York that is then mapped against the current performance and the viewer is uh, alerted to trends going on in the game. So this again is another example of the kind of emerging metaverse. You know, previously games, you went into a stadium, you watched them, you shouted for your team. Um, we've obviously seen the rise of sporting apps, um, kind of quite strong prolifer proliferation of those, particularly around football, soccer. Um, but by bringing it into a cross-device immersive uh, arena, we get back to the same core proposition, which is you no longer need to actually be at the event to have uh, as good an experience as you would in real life, or in some ways a, even an, an augmented, a better experience than you would have actually at the game. Now, obviously, when you're at a cultural event, when you're at a sporting event, you know that that buzz of being with the crowd, being together, is is difficult to replicate. But when you look at the the sort of the the burden of travel, perhaps it's tickets, perhaps the actual ticket cost of the game, perhaps it's Airbnbs, perhaps it's transport. When you look at all these kind of quite big costs that can be associated with following your team, versus the convenience of following them digitally uh, in an immersive platform. You can see that it's 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 quite a uh, a fair trade, and um, you know it's e much easier to ex assess access access um, using digital devices. Uh, this just this weekend just gone actually there was um, a music concert in Sansar uh, called Lost Horizon, and it was to kind of replicate. Um, the uh, Shangri-La part of Glastonbury. Um, Shangri-La is kind of one of the sort of smaller fields away from the, the main loop of Glastonbury. And it's kind of where you get really interesting art installations, you get crazy shenanigans going on late at night. But typically, you've got to be there two, three, four in the morning for these kind of crazy things to go off. But the, um, the, the VR version we went into this weekend it kind of had that feeling of being peak experience and really crazy right from the beginning. So we were jumping in at eight o'clock, a uh, couple of VR sets here at home. And, um, and all of a sudden we're transported to this dance floor that feels like it's three in the morning in the midst of Shangri-La. We haven't had to sort of be in Glastonbury for 48 hours, getting muddy, losing our tent, losing our mates, etc., etc. In fact, when I was in Sansa, I had a handy menu on my hand that went find friend, teleport to friend, um, 
which kind of made that whole experience really, really seamless. So what I'm driving back to is that this emerging metaverse is actually starting to happen and that COVID has accelerated this process. And these processes, these techniques are gonna happen or that are, well, I'm saying gonna happen, are available to your business. They're available for you to really improve and develop your customer and employee experience. We've got all these benefits of creating scenarios that are difficult to simulate in real life. And you know, we're starting to get quite a strong knowledge base of how people react and learn uh, in immersive spaces now. So there's really a ripe opportunity for you to jump in um, and have a test with a platform like Vision XR. So yeah, in terms of sort of the sample materials for what these different environments can look like, um, using Vision XR, we've recreated um, gallery spaces where we've um, put in our favorite artwork from Jeff Koons and people like Moores. Uh, really just a bit of fun to go, okay, well, what, what could it look like if we custom built our own gallery environment? Uh, we've also created kind of puzzle spaces to really reflect what a you know a breakout creative breakout space in the future could look like you know if you, at the moment as i mentioned earlier you know your your workforce is distributed and remote but let's say we all do go back to this kind of office model i think people aren't going to go want to go back to that straight away they're going to want to have the connection but really take advantage of the tool so we've built um some uh, some break breakout spaces and creative spaces to allow creative thinking and just engage with your colleagues on a perhaps slightly more relaxed uh, type of environment. We've built medical facilities because um, where it's difficult to train um, around medical operations. And we also have a facility for bringing in photogrammetry models. So you can take scans from the real world and recreate the uh, real places for people to explore again on any desktop um, on any device it could be VR AR desktop or mobile so really COVID has massively accelerated the adoption of these immersive technology spaces and if you have a need uh, if you have a clear problem which you think might be able to be tackled by recreating environments or training scenarios that are difficult or impossible at the moment to simulate in real life, uh, then please get in contact. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to discuss how we might help your business forward. One of our first uh, sort of pieces of work when engaging with new customers is an ROI calculator. So to really understand um, what the current costs to your customers, um, to your staff of engaging in training is, what the cost of not doing the training is. And we really work with you to establish whether there's value there. I mean, everyone, when they try the technology, go, wow, that's amazing. I can see how that could work. But really, it's about drilling down into where is the ROI. In this film uh, abstract that we've put together, it's really a kind of brainstorming space for employee experience. Um, you know, obviously we're all remote working now, but um, immersive tech gives us the ability to kind of create the work or the brainstorming space that we'd all love to have at work. So this next film, uh, Abstract, shows, uh, okay, well, what could a brainstorm space look like? And in this next film, uh, we've uh, remodeled a conference room, but um, having done a bunch of work in aviation, we've obviously dropped some aircraft onto the table. So this is a conference room environment, but with the ability to plan, um, really with any kind of object, we've just used aircraft uh, in this case, because it, it shows a nice mixing of the different spaces, you know, uh, having multiple aircraft just on a table in your conference room. Uh, 
pretty fun for planning. During lockdown, because we couldn't meet up in person, we thought, why don't we build our own gallery? So uh, we built our own gallery space. Uh, we used it actually for a demo with you at Packard. And we uh, put some sculptures in there that are normally difficult to access, like some Jeff Koons, a few Damien Hursts, and uh, we used that Damien Hurst rainbow uh, that's been being used for the NHS as well. Um, yeah, really, really fun just to build a kind of cultural space with no limits, like no roof. Um, really play around with the architecture. So uh, yeah, highly recommend uh, each company should get their own gallery space to play around in and brainstorm. So in this uh, space that we called Cyberpunk, because uh, obviously it's quite Blade Runner-esque, we sort of demonstrating the ability for IP franchises, whether it's Secret Cinema, whether it's Blade Runner itself, or any kind of science fiction type franchise, you know, we can recreate those spaces, we can get anyone to join on any device. Um, so again, and it was a lot of fun to play around with, with, with the guys from work and meet up there, really have an explore and a play. So yeah, enjoy this space. And you know, in the spirit of difficult to access scenarios, which are either expensive or just not readily available, we recreated a operating theatre, complete with our own uh, mannequin who's had a slightly dodgy knee injury. Uh, but again, ability to recreate uh, training environments for uh, actual procedural training or just hardware and uh, equipment training. So um, this one is the operating theatre. So yeah, at Future Visual, we are part of the Hewitt Packard Independent Software Vendor Program, so we can help you um, with hardware choices. Um, 
we can help you with enterprise-wide rollout. And really, we just love to hear more about your business and see if the emerging metaverse can uh, solve problems and create opportunities for you. We're a little bit at that moment of, um, you know, kind of when there was all the rush around dot com, uh, you know, pre MySpace. You know, we're just getting that kind of momentum going with these metaverse applications. But this is the way many companies are going to engage both internally and externally. We'd love to help you and be part of that journey. Many thanks and have a great day.